From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. For a while last Thursday, Netflix was king of the media world, with its market value at one point topping $153 billion to briefly overtake Disney as the world's most valuable media company. You remember their business model? Stuffing DVDs into envelopes and mailing them to you at the house? Who thought that would ever lead to anything good? Meanwhile, hey, how's that employment line, Blockbuster? Britney Spears' ex, Kevin Federline, has gone to court seeking to have his $20,000 in child support tripled to $60,000 per month. Why do I get the feeling, though, this money's not going to the kids? Uh, hey, Kev, yeah, uh, if you can't raise your child with $20,000 per month, you have no business being your child's legal guardian. A new study finds that eating an egg a day can actually be good for cardiovascular health and cut the risk of stroke by up to 26 percent. This is extraordinary news! Sorry, I was just trying to make a yoke, but I laid an egg. I must be stopped, people! Down in South Carolina, Kara Kaczynski could not have been more proud of her son, who graduated from his Christian homeschooling program, summa cum laude, with a 4.79 GPA. So, Kara decided to mark the occasion with a celebratory cake from Publix Grocery Store. She asked that the cake read, Congrats, Jacob, summa cum laude, class of 2018. Only one problem was the folks at the bakery had apparently never heard of this Latin phrase, summa cum laude, which means with highest honors. They thought that middle word, cum, was the dirty word, the dirty pronunciation. So they changed that to three dashes. So the cake read, Summa dash 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 laud. Nobody figured this out until the cake unveiling, which outraged Kara. She posted on Facebook, How utterly ridiculous! Shame on you, Publix, for turning an innocent Latin phrase into a total embarrassment for having to explain to my son and others, including my 70 year old mother, about this joke of a cake. Well, congratulations anyway, Jacob. A judge in New York State has ruled that a 30-year-old man must move out of his parents' house. So pack up, you deadbeat slacker! Pack up those video games and your Star Wars collectibles and get out! Or, hey, maybe, maybe you could just pay rent, genius! Eight women have come forward and claimed they were victims of sexual harassment from Morgan Freeman. Unbelievable! You know, by my calculations, I think the only male left in Hollywood that hasn't been accused of this is Finn Wolfhard. President Trump canceled his scheduled meeting with North Korea's leader. Kim Jong-un has already filled that date with an afternoon wine tasting with Dennis Rodman. Down in Mazatlan, Mexico, Maria de la Luz claims that she is six months pregnant and will soon give birth to a beautiful baby girl. Only one catch, she's 71 years old. If this is true, this would make her the oldest mother in history. Luz says that she first suspected she was pregnant three months ago when she started feeling tired and experienced symptoms like dizziness and vomiting. She went to a private clinic for an ultrasound which revealed that she was going to become a mother for the ninth time. The 71-year-old woman admits that doctors at the clinic were even more surprised than she was and claims to have had a total of 10 ultrasounds in the last 10 months just to be sure. Although her other children are not too happy about the news that they're going to have another sister and many people have advised her to terminate the pregnancy due to her advanced age, Luz claims she's excited about her pregnancy. She has an appointment scheduled with a gynecologist July 18th and expects that, due to her age, the baby will have to be delivered by cesarean section. Oh, by FYI, the current oldest mother title holder is Maria del Carmen Busada who gave birth to a set of twins in 2006 at the age of 67. A million chainsaws are currently under recall because they might continue to operate after being shut off. It's kind of like when you think your mother-in-law is finally done talking, only to find out she was just pausing to take a breath. Keep listening, there's more weird news to come. Today's Daily Dose of Weird News is brought to you by Send Out Cards. You can mail a real, personalized greeting card without leaving the house or going out to buy stamps. Choose from the hundreds of existing cards on the website or create one of your own completely from scratch, using your own photos and message. You can even use your own handwriting and signature if you wish. You create it all digitally, on the website, before it goes to the post office to get mailed. For an extra special touch, you can add a gift to the card, like a stuffed animal, bakery items, or candy. 
Try it now, just in time for Father's Day. You can do it absolutely free at sendoutcards.com slash weird. Remember the slash weird part. Sendoutcards.com slash weird. Hillary Clinton urged the graduating class at Yale to buy newspaper subscriptions. The graduates yelled, glad to! What's a newspaper? You take Tylenol to relieve pain, and while it does that well, it may also relieve you of something else – your joy. Researchers at The Ohio State University in Columbus discovered that acetaminophen, the primary ingredient in Tylenol, blunts positive emotions, a previously unknown side effect. I can only assume Rosie O'Donnell always has a headache. Earlier this month, Amber Kornack posted her new job on Facebook, which she called a dream job with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that involved working with grizzly bears. Well, less than a week later, the 28-year-old was mauled by her dream job in Montana. Kornack was working solo near a stream in the Cabinet Mountains collecting grizzly hair samples when a grizzly bear attacked. Her quick thinking helped her to survive. Kornack was able to grab her bear spray and drive the animal off. The spray worked so well she's now carrying it with her at all times in case she comes across her ex-boyfriend. Hasbro has filed a trademark for the scent of Play-Doh. You know, I think if they made that into a spray, it would be one way to trick kids into eating kale. Research has found that families who fish together are likely to have fewer problems. The research found in low socioeconomic inner-city areas, families that fished together were less likely to exhibit antisocial behavior. Of course, that also could be because they're all tanked up on beer. AT&T has announced that later this year they're going to start selling a smartphone that will feature a holographic display that projects 3D images. It's perfect for anybody asking Obi-Wan Kenobi for help. Welcome to 2018, where kids are being taught to write on computer keyboards in kindergarten, resulting in fewer and fewer knowing how to read handwriting. More than 85 percent of students now write the essay part of the SAT exam in block letters because they don't know how to write in cursive, nor do they know how to read cursive. The shocking part is that most teachers don't seem to care that handwriting is becoming a lost art. Really? Yeah, well, you'll be singing another tune once the zombie apocalypse takes place and your precious iPad runs out of juice. One of life's simple pleasures just got a little sweeter. After years of waffling research on coffee and health, even some fear that Java might raise the risk of heart disease, a recent study finds the opposite is true – coffee drinkers are more likely to live longer. Regular or decaf, it doesn't matter. Starbucks – passing out immortality seven bucks at a time. Well, you're not going to get your immortality today because Starbucks is closed today, Tuesday. It's the day that they're shutting down their stores for three or four hours for racial sensitivity training. Might also suggest some education there to improve their spelling. I don't think they've gotten my name right even once when writing it on my coffee cup. And it's never in cursive. A top North Korean official has called comments made by Vice President Mike Pence stupid. Pence responded by pointing out that it's time to demonstrate a more mature diplomatic approach. That's when the president made his poo-poo head comment. Brazilian football legend Ronaldinho will reportedly marry two women at the same time during a small wedding ceremony in August. Funeral services for Ronaldinho are already scheduled for September. Students and staff members at South Mecklenburg High School in Charlotte, North Carolina had to be evacuated after an unknown odor was reported in the area. The smell, which students reportedly claimed caused their eyes to tear up and throats to burn, ended up being nothing particularly hazardous or sinister. Hazmat teams which investigated the incident said the source of the odor was nothing more than a clogged toilet. The air quality incident occurred after a maintenance worker plunged the toilet, sending who knows what airborne. Nobody was seriously injured. But the school is adding a section to their health classes next year called Your Gas Mask and You. According to a recent Gallup poll, 96 percent of Americans have a favorable view of Canada. Except during the winter, when they keep sending us cold air. One of Woody Allen's sons, Moses, is now defending his dad and claiming that his mom was the abusive one. You know, I say we just be safe and call the entire family whack. The study says a strong grip may predict a longer life at all ages, which totally makes sense. My G.I. Joe with Kung Fu grip has got to be at least 40 years old. 
Retired quarterback Brett Favre says he made three trips to rehab during his Hall of Fame career to fight his dependence on painkillers and alcohol. He didn't have to go back that many times, but because of all the hits to his head, he kept forgetting that he'd gone to rehab, so then he'd go back. An odd trend has some high school students getting their prom dates croissants – yes, the French pastry – to wear on their wrist instead of the traditional floral corsage. The first photo evidence of this hilarious movement dates back on social media to 2015. Julia Gorman got a croissant corsage last year for her senior prom. I really don't like corsages, and I was talking to a friend about how I didn't want one, she told Today Style. He suggested that instead I opt for a croissant. So now you can tell your date she looks delicious – and mean it. Men who are accused of never listening to women now have an excuse. Women's voices are more complex and therefore more difficult for men to listen to than other men's voices. At least I think that's what I heard on the news. You know, honestly, I wasn't really listening because it was a female reporter giving the story. A woman was driving down a stretch of highway in Omaha one recent evening when her daughter noticed a cat hanging onto the roof of a minivan in the next lane going about 60 miles per hour. They alerted the driver of the van who pulled over. The driver says the rooftop stowaway was her cat, Rebel, who she had no idea was up there. Rebel's owner, Michelle Krieger, says, "...when I got him off the roof of the van, he wasn't scared at all. He wasn't shaking, heart wasn't racing, nothing. We were more scared than him." Well, yeah, he has eight more lives left. Starbucks closed 8,000 of their locations this week for anti-bias training. It wasn't any big deal for customers, though. If they found Starbucks closed, all they had to do was cross the street to the other Starbucks. Want to teach your kids to love reading? Do this. Encourage them to do it out loud to a dog. Gil Johnson with the University of Nottingham in the UK says a dog is a reassuring, uncritical audience who will not mind if mistakes are made. Huh. Uncritical. Doesn't point out mistakes. Well, who needs a dog? We already have that with today's liberal education system. Columbia, South Carolina Mayor Steve Benjamin was stuck on a DC-bound plane last week in an hours-long delay because of weather conditions in Washington. He was there with around two dozen other passengers, so Mayor Steve called up a friend in the airport and ordered food from the airport restaurants – burgers, chicken fingers, salad and fries – and had it all delivered onto the plane. Where he ate it all himself – he's a huge guy. I'm just kidding, obviously. He shared. At least that's what he claims. Former Spokane NAACP president Rachel Dolezal has been accused of food stamp fraud. She was so accustomed to lying to people she just couldn't stop at just her ethnicity. If you ever remember what it was like getting a paper back from a teacher all marked up in red pen with endless corrections, you can imagine how the White House felt when its form letter was returned by retired teacher Yvonne Mason. Ms. Mason taught middle and high school in South Carolina for 17 years and says, I have never, ever received a letter with this many silly mistakes. When you get letters from the highest level of government, you expect them to be at least mechanically correct. Mason began the exchange with a letter asking President Trump to meet family members of victims of the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. In response, she received a form letter that discusses school safety. She says not only did this letter not address the issue she asked about, it was filled with grammatical mistakes. Mason marked improper capitalizations of president, state, federal, and nation, among many other things, as she explained the word federal is capitalized only when used as part of a proper noun, for example, the name of an agency. Some of her more colorful comments included, have y'all tried grammar and style check? And OMG, this is wrong. Mason says the letter would have received a D if she was grading it for a high school. A recent survey shows one in five pet owners would sacrifice a 30-day supply of pet cuddles for the sake of their smartphone. Which is exactly why I have forgone the whole pet idea and I just named my smartphone Rex. During a driver's evening commute in Tacoma, Washington, an object struck his car. He discovered it was a handgun lodged in his bumper. Police believe he was the victim of a drive-by tossing. Bartolo Colon has turned 45 years old, making him the oldest active player in the majors. 
and the right age for Colin to get his first colonoscopy. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is recalling more than 228,000 pounds of spam after four consumers complained about metal objects in the food. The USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service says the canned chicken and pork in question was produced in February at the company's plant in Fremont, Nebraska. The agency says minor oral injuries have been reported. The recall covers 12-ounce metal cans containing Spam Classic with a Best Buy date of February 2021. Whew, man, thank goodness. It's just a manufacturing mistake. It has nothing to do with the high-quality, nutritious food we call spam. Scientists say a way to beat Alzheimer's disease is with aspirin and alcohol. May I just be the first to say I love scientists? The regular use of alcohol-based disinfecting hand gels authorities recommend during flu season has little effect on infection rate, according to a recent study. The findings suggest that the flu viruses are most effectively transmitted in the air rather than by contact with infected surfaces. So they're now suggesting you suck up the hand gel through your nostrils. On Friday, Stacey Cunningham became the first woman to ever be the president of the New York Stock Exchange. And I'm actually surprised it took this long. Women have always been better at spending money than men. My wife has made shopping an art form. A study says the happiest years in a person's life are between the ages of 23 and 69. Hard to believe I only have 20 more years to be happy. Seattle is now officially the fastest-growing city in the U.S. Who knew people liked being wet and depressed all the time? Tens of thousands of Las Vegas casino workers have voted to authorize a strike next month. What happens in Vegas is soon about to stop happening in Vegas. A Harvard professor is studying a drug that may make it dramatically easier for grown-ups to absorb new skills and information, almost as if they were seven years old or younger. The upside is you learn a lot. Downside, though, you can't stop humming the theme to SpongeBob SquarePants. Cannabis users want Hollywood to abandon pot stereotypes. For the record, they've asked three times today. Good Morning America is expanding by an hour, moving into the early afternoon time slot held by The Chew, which is being canceled. Can you still call it Good Morning America if it's going to be airing in the early afternoon? I mean, wouldn't that just contribute to the dumbing down of America? Maybe we make it Good Brunch America. No, now I'm hungry. A robot creator says that humans will be marrying droids by the year 2045. By then, I can decide if I plan to invite the toaster. Nearly one in four millennials live with their mom. The other three millennials don't live at home, but they still visit daily for food and laundry services. Your diet might be changing soon for the more disgusting. Scientists believe that the cockroach milk produced by the Pacific beetle cockroach could one day become the ultimate superfood. The Pacific beetle cockroach is viviparous, meaning the female gives birth to live babies that have developed within their body, instead of laying eggs. As the embryos grow inside the mother's body, she feeds them a pale, yellowish liquid like milk that scientists discovered has three times the energy content of buffalo milk, making it one of the most nutritious substances on Earth. Researcher Leonard Chavez told CNN, "...it's what one would need – protein, essential amino acids, lipids, and sugars. The nutritious substance can be extracted in either liquid or crystal form through a process called cockroach milking." However, as you might have guessed, milking cockroaches is not the easiest thing in the world to do, not to mention that it reportedly takes a thousand cockroaches to harvest only a hundred grams of milk. So for the time being, scientists are looking at ways of recreating the stuff in the lab or coming up with a cockroach milk pill. De Beers is going to begin selling diamonds that are made in a lab. Don't we already have that? It's called cubic zirconia. Easy on that cinnamon! That advice from Denmark's food authority has rankled pastry chefs whose cinnamon rolls were found to violate the European Union's spice rules. The Danish Veterinary and Food Administration recently discovered that Danish cinnamon rolls and twists contained more coumarin, a chemical compound in the most common variety of cinnamon, than the EU rules allow. So the agency asked Danish bakers to reduce the amount of cinnamon that they sprinkle in the dough for sweet treats like the cinnamon roll and cinnamon twist. 
Danish bakers protested, saying the EU limit is too strict and would make it hard, if not impossible, to make their cherished pastries. Okay, now I'm confused here. I mean, since when did former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg move to Denmark? The NBA Championship Series will feature the Golden State Warriors against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Again. This makes the fourth year in a row. Hey, here's a suggestion. Why don't we call them the Deja Vu Games? Mexico is looking to battle the bulging waistlines of its children by banning the sale of junk food in its schools, including many of the traditional treats generations of kids have grown up with. Getting the axe, along with modern soft drinks and sweets, will be salted tamarind candy, pork rinds, and atoll, which is a thick and sweet cornstarch-based beverage served piping hot in the morning. On the plus side, candy-filled piñatas are still allowed because they're good for cardiovascular exercise. Well, how's this for embarrassing? In Belleville, Illinois, a Camp Jackson fire truck caught fire inside the fire station. Crews at the station found heavy smoke inside the front bay around 1 p.m. Assistant Chief Sharon Davis said firefighters were able to start the truck and pull it outside away from the other equipment. They then worked for about 15 minutes to put the fire out. Davis said they believe the fire was electrical in nature and didn't know if the truck could be salvaged. So far, they have no one to flame, uh, blame, but the fire chief is definitely hot under the collar and uh, might fire someone before the heat dies down. Meghan Markle now has her own official coat of arms. I guess a jacket with just two arms isn't enough for royalty? Wildfires strike suddenly and unexpectedly, destroying homes, taking lives, and costing billions of dollars every year. Well, now scientists say that new satellite technology developed by NASA could help predict where fires will strike next. According to Time magazine, the system, known as FireSat, uses infrared sensors to identify wildfires when they have grown to be at least 35 to 50 feet wide. Detection by the system occurs within 15 minutes of the beginning of that fire. Next, they hope to create another early warning system to let people know of oncoming Kardashians. Andrew Lincoln is going to be leaving The Walking Dead this next season, with Norman Reedus taking over the lead role. They plan to have Rick just walk off limping into the sunset, much like the latest ratings of The Walking Dead. Residents of Papua New Guinea will have to forget about using Facebook for a month. The country's communication minister, Sam Basil, says his government plans to ban the social media site for a month to call out fake users and see how Facebook is affecting people's lives. So, Is it possible to go a full month without Facebook? Do they have medications to make available for those who suffer withdrawal? Because I think I'd probably need it. Fruit Loops cereal has added a new flavor, Wildberry. I, can, I can't help but think the word esque or ish should be added to that. Before you check out, remember that the hotel towels aren't yours. And just because they are owned by a big corporation doesn't make it right to steal them. Visitors steal roughly $50 million worth of towels every year in the United States. You know, I am suddenly feeling guilty about taking that half-full bottle of conditioner. Disney World announced they are finally serving alcohol at every restaurant in the Magic Kingdom. It's their last-ditch effort to make Stitch's Great Escape somewhat entertaining. Over in Indonesia, police say 10 passengers on a Lion Air flight preparing to take off from Borneo were injured after a passenger falsely claimed there was a bomb on board. Most of the injuries were head wounds and broken bones as the 189 passengers panicked and scrambled to get off the plane. Videos showed dozens of people standing on the Boeing 737's right wing. Some slid down the right engine and landed on the tarmac. Police say 26-year-old Frantinus Nerigi told a flight attendant there was a bomb on board. Another passenger broke the emergency exit windows. Both men were arrested. Police inspectors, by the way, found no bomb. You gotta admit, though, that is a good way to clear out some space to get more legroom. A new study says people adding more seafood to their diet can improve their sex lives. Yeah, maybe so, but I am still not eating oysters. Unless they're covered in Cheetos dust. If you could live a tax-free life, would you get a big tattoo with the letters IRS on it on your body? In a survey, one in five Americans said, yeah, they would. Hey, can I add something else to the tattoo then? I mean, along with the letters IRS? If so, I'd like to add the letter F at the beginning and the letter T at the end. See, there you go. Now stop taxing me into oblivion. 
The oceanfront estate in San Clemente that was once owned by Richard M. Nixon and known as the Western White House during his presidency is back up for sale at $63.5 million. Great opportunity if they can somehow, somewhere against all odds, find somebody who admires Richard M. Nixon. A Dubai couple's marriage has got to be a contender for the title of shortest marriage in history. It seems the groom asked for a divorce less than 15 minutes after the wedding ceremony. Sadly, the reason comes down to money, specifically the dowry payment he had agreed to pay the bride's father. As per the contract the groom and his father-in-law had signed, the newly married man agreed to pay the bride's father 100,000 dirhams, which is about $27,000, in two installments, half up front and then the other half after the wedding. But the newly married man asked the bride's father to wait just five minutes, assuring him that the money was in the car, but the father-in-law insisted the groom send somebody to get the money so he could be paid immediately. As the whole ugly exchange played out in front of the newlyweds' friends and family, the groom became embarrassed and insulted, so he marched right back into the courthouse and divorced his wife less than 15 minutes after marrying her, which you can totally do over there. Thanks, Daddy. One day, a security screening could include analyzing the way you walk. Researchers looked at the walking patterns of over 120 people, saying artificial intelligence has been created that can identify you simply by watching you stroll. In theory, analyzing your walking style could replace fingerprints or retinal scans for security screening. But then, of course, the TSA is still going to force you to take off your shoes, screwing up your normal walk anyway. According to estimates, during the summer, 818 hot dogs are eaten every second. But enough about Rosie O'Donnell. A recent study examining 125-million-year-old fossils discovered in China reveals that dinosaurs had a condition common to humans – their skin would flake off, creating tiny dandruff specks. So I apparently have something in common with the Psoriasaurus rex. Lindsey Gottlieb, the head coach for the University of California women's basketball team, slammed Southwest Airlines on Twitter after she said they questioned whether her biracial son was actually her child. The company has since apologized. Sounds like Southwest Airlines employees should have crashed that Starbucks sensitivity training the other day. A Nebraska man's chocolate craving landed him behind bars. Police in Grand Island responded to an alarm call Saturday afternoon at a Dairy Queen where officers said they found 18-year-old Joseph Lewandowski hiding with a bag of crushed Reese's peanut butter cups. Police said Lewandowski admitted to using a screwdriver, which he was found with, to break into a freezer to steal the ice cream topping. You know what? I would pounce on this if I worked in the Reese's advertising department. Reese's peanut butter cups – so irresistible, you'll go to jail for them. An air traveler is in trouble after he allegedly urinated on a seat during a recent Frontier Airlines flight. Well, he wanted to go to the bathroom before getting on board, but for some reason Starbucks wasn't open at the time. The CIA reports that North Korea is not willing to get rid of their nuclear weapons, but they might consider opening a Western hamburger franchise in their capital city. It's kind of hard to determine which one is more dangerous. Delta is rolling out new, redesigned uniforms for its staff. Considering what flight attendants got to deal with, the only uniform I'd wear would be an Iron Man suit. Sweden's newest beer is made using recycled sewage water. And you thought my news yesterday about cockroach milk was disgusting. Buildings of all kinds – homes, offices, cafes, schools – are being constructed out of recycled shipping containers. According to David Cross, co-founder of SG Blocks, a company specializing in container reconstruction, the energy used to construct a container home is about 95 percent less than the energy used to melt and discard the container. Yet, they're not just for the environmentally conscious. Container homes are typically cheaper and faster to build than traditionally constructed homes. And because they're made from steel, they are also extremely durable. Yeah. Spending a hot summer day in a big metal box. Oh, that is my idea of home. Because they have to, the United States Geological Survey is warning Hawaii residents not to heat marshmallows over the hot lava flows. What? Why let those hot lava flows go to waste? Is it still okay if they fry spam on it, though? Keep listening, there's more weird news to come. 
So the folks over at MyPillow, they said, hey, Darren, can you try out a MyPillow and let us know what you think about it? Well, I was, I was kind of skeptical. I mean, it's a pillow, <laughs> right? Uh, well, what did I have to lose, though? They're giving me a free pillow. So you know, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I lost. I lost interrupted sleep. Yeah, no more folding the pillow in half, no more flat, lifeless pillows, no more using two pillows to get comfortable, as I've been doing for years. This has actually changed the way I sleep. And, and well, so now I'm letting you know. You need my pillow. Well, not, not my pillow, but your own my pillow. It stays cool all night long. You're not waking up at 3 a.m. to flip to the cool side of the pillow. It keeps its shape. You're not reshaping your pillow in the middle of the night. That is amazing. Uh, it comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you try it and you don't like it, just return it. My pillow, it comes with a 10-year warranty as well. You got a pillow that comes with a 10-year warranty? I don't think so. And you can toss a my pillow in your washer and dryer. It's like new again when you do that. Try doing that with your feather or down pillow. See what happens. Don't do that. I, I, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. It'll ruin your pillow. But you can do that with a my pillow pillow. And right now, as a special welcome to the podcast, you can get two premium my pillows for one low price. Just go to mypillow.com and enter the promo code WEIRD. That's MyPillow.com and then use the promo code WEIRD. Or you can call 800-945-7192. That's 800-945-7192 or MyPillow.com. Either way, be sure to use that promo code WEIRD. Pokemon Quest is the new game heading to phones and Nintendo Switch. Cities are already bracing for a surge at local hospitals in people walking into light poles injuries. Hey, by the way, Roseanne is now blaming Ambien for her Twitter comments. Does anybody else see anywhere where Ambien claims one of the possible side effects is outspoken racism? I'm not seeing that listed on the bottle. Now there is an online dating app that matches people by their credit scores. Oh, that's got to be an exciting dating profile. I'm looking for a man whose passions include classical music, moonlit walks on the beach, and paying off his credit card every month. Will Power won this year's Indy 500, barely defeating Determined and Relentless. Hillary Clinton says that she would like to be the CEO of Facebook. She's even willing to do the hosting on a server in her bathroom. Well, here's another reason to drink coffee. That morning cup of java or lunchtime soda might serve a purpose beyond giving you a jolt of energy. According to a new study by researchers at Johns Hopkins University, caffeine enhances memory. In other news, that morning cup of java or lunchtime soda might serve a purpose beyond giving you a jolt of energy. According to a new study by researchers at Johns Hopkins University, caffeine enhances memory. Some die-hard Houston Rockets fans are blaming Ted Cruz for their Monday night loss to Golden State. He was at the game, apparently. You know, somebody's been reading Hillary Clinton's new book and realizing it's possible to blame everyone else but yourself for losing. Louisiana televangelist Jesse Duplantis is telling his followers that Jesus told him he needs a $54 million jet. Totally something God would say, right. Although, you know what? Now that I, he, he might have a point on this. I mean, you can't help but feel you're being manipulated by evil people when flying coach. Brody Jenner will be walking down the aisle soon, but a few family members will not be attending his Bali wedding to fiancé Caitlin with a K, Carter. He invented Kendall and Kylie Jenner, but never heard back from either of them. His dad, Caitlin, with a C, said he or she will not be able to attend because of a lucrative business opportunity. Let's hope Brody's fiancé doesn't take his last name. That would mean yet another Caitlyn Jenner in the world, and we already have one too many. Here's another reason to drink coffee. That morning cup of java or lunchtime soda might serve a purpose beyond giving you a jolt of energy. According to a new study by researchers at Johns Hopkins University, caffeine enhances memory. And as you've already heard, months of talks between Jared Kushner and Kim Kardashian resulted in an Oval Office meeting with President Trump to talk prison reform on Wednesday. First up on the agenda, create new prison inmate uniforms so they all look fabulous. If you like what you're hearing, please leave a review of the podcast and share a link to this episode with a couple of friends and suggest they subscribe too. For Daily Dose of Weird News, I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos.